Okay, so another fabulous find was this coffee table. Now it's been about 12 hours since we applied the brush on gel and we flipped it over because it's hard enough now. And it's time to work on the skirt and the legs of the table. Now we painted it with a coat of the Cathedral Taupe and uh, oh, we just sanded it prior to applying it. We didn't use any Ultra Grip, even though it was a really high sheen, we just deglossed it and then applied one coat of the Cathedral Taupe. Now, if you can see all this lovely detail and the style of the table is quite old, so uh, we're going to antique it and we're going to do that with a glaze. We could use the, an like the wax in either you know, of the darker colors, for instance, the espresso or the black or the aging. We've got numerous waxes out there, but I only use wax if I know that is it. I don't ever want to put another finish on it. You can continue with putting more and more wax on, but you can't come along with a, a water base and put that on there. So uh, if you were going to do that, you would have to remove it with a mineral spirit, which is very time consuming. So. I know what we want to do with this table, and just in case we want to change the color in the future, I'm just going to use the antiquing glaze because if we change our mind, we can paint right over it. It's a water base. It is not 100% acrylic in the resin, like with our paints, so it's not extremely washable. It is washable, but not extremely. So if you're going to be doing a kitchen cabinet where you wanted to wash it daily, you would have to put a top coat on top of this. So the tough coat is, is perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna show you now is, it's really quick and easy to do. This has been stirred. This is the antiquing glaze, and it has a really long open time, which means it'll take hours and hours before it actually dries. So you can work with it, and working with it means I'm going to be applying it so it sits into the lower parts, like in the recesses of this carved furniture. So see as you just apply it like so. It's kind of a, I don't know, a mousy brown, but when it dries, it gets quite dark. And you don't have to be, you know, too perfect about it. What you wanna do, what you have to be perfect about is to get it into all the lower parts of your furniture. So I'm using a lot right here. It's really quite thick. There's virtually no smell. So just to show you here, what you're trying to, what you're trying to show is the fact that this painted piece has been there for ages and it's just over time gotten more and more dirty. And you come along and you clean it, but you'll never clean the lower parts. And look at how it really accentuates. Look at that, it just pops now. I really like using the applicators because they're just firm enough. They stay quite flat. So they're not going to remove the glaze from the lower parts because I, I want the glaze to stay there. But it is going to remove the glaze from the higher parts. Check this out. You can even you can pretty much remove all of the glaze on the high parts. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? So I'm just gonna continue along. Let me show you on the skirt how that stands out. See this little carved area? That's pretty much where I want it to pop and show you how it was routed there. Another thing with the antiquing glaze is if you just paint it on and just hold your brush just like so. You can just leave it like that and what it is giving you the appearance is as though you have painted it years ago and the paint was really thick and now it's gotten dirty over time. So this is a really nice technique to do on say, you know, a cabinet door for instance. Just to show you here, we'll remove the excess. Oh, 
and see how it just stays behind in the line there? A little tip, if you wanted to go for a little bit of a darker or a different color than this darker brown, the antiquing glaze, you can customize your own color. But I chose this one because the top, it just matches perfectly. However, if you wanted to do, say, for instance, a blue glaze, you add about 20% of, say, midnight blue into 80% of our clear glaze. You can up and down those ratios a little bit depending on your intensity, but you can play with it, but you could totally go for a colored glaze on this type of project as well to truly customize it. So I really couldn't pass up a solid wood coffee table, what turned out to be mahogany, even though it had a few scratches on the top and some imperfections along the leg. What we did is we put one coat of the brush-on gel stain in the double espresso color and it really revitalized the top. It brought down what was originally a really high sheen and it also corrected some imperfections which were a couple of gouges and some cracks where the lacquer had actually fallen and broken right off. So one coat of that and then also one coat of the cathedral taupe on the legs and then after we applied a antiquing glaze to that and it really uh, brought out the wood carving in that solid wood leg so it just kind of really accentuated that. We didn't put a top coat on the glaze because it, it's a leg of a table. It's not going to be washed on a daily basis. So it's just one coat of the cathedral taupe and then one coat of the antiquing glaze and that's it. We wiped away the excess, of course. Uh, but yes, no top coat for that. On the very top of the coffee table is the very durable brush-on gel stain. And that, you know, you're able to slide even this candelabra across it. That's how hard of a surface it becomes. Again, we have our fresco wall backdrop. It's very neutral. And we've paired it with a couple of subdued colors, the dark muted pinks. And we have a little bit of a bling here with these lovely little shiny festive balls. And here we have a bit of texture, which is going to take a little bit of the color from the vase over on the other side. But being that overall, the coffee table is a very neutral color, you can accentuate this neutral look with pops of color here and there if you like. But right now we've got a really subdued scene here with the muted pink. And the only bling that we have is from the balls and the candelabra. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed our little tips and tricks about revitalizing this coffee table so it can enjoy another generation. Mm -hmm.